Hello? Hello. Hello? It's evening in Fort Myers, Florida. We're not selling anything, just doing an opinion poll on some interesting subjects in the news. And the poll taking has begun. Do you feel that way strongly or somewhat? Do you usually think of yourself as a Democrat, a Republican, an independent, or a white? This is the rhythm of the night. From dinner time until midnight at the research firm Apt Associates. This poll is being done for the Washington Post and ABC News, gathering opinions on politics as midterm elections loom. Do you have a favorable or unfavorable impression of Trump as pr a person? No one saw it coming, not even the polls. President-elect Donald Trump. In the last big election. So how did the pollsters in the Clinton campaign get it so wrong? You know, the one in 2016. How did the polls miss this? Polls so took a beating. There is going to be an incredible, long, deep, rigorous autopsy done on the polling that pervaded this campaign. It was horrific. Public polling. So why should anyone believe what they say now? The conventional wisdom out of the 2016 election was that polls were broken. Uh, but polls, in fact, were much more accurate than many people thought. National polls showed Clinton with a slight edge, uh, about three percentage points, and she ended up winning the national popular vote by two. At the state level, uh, there was a consistent underestimation of Trump's support. And uh, post-election analysis found that this was partly due to late deciders uh, swinging in Trump's direction, uh, but also due to an overrepresentation of college-educated voters, something that polls need to fix in the upcoming elections. It begins with a phone, a screen, and some questions. Simple enough. A special counsel at the U.S. Justice Department, Robert Mueller, note there that that is pronounced Mueller and not Mueller. But when something's called a scientific poll, nothing is so simple. Let's tear it up tonight, guys. Let's start with the phone numbers, all random, chosen by a computer. From mobile phones to the old-fashioned landline, everybody with a phone number has an equal chance of getting called. You likely have to call more than 20,000 numbers to end up with a poll of a thousand real-life people. A big chunk of those calls just don't work out. They're not in service, they're business lines, or belong to a fax machine. Remember those? Polls can focus on different populations, which may impact results. Most polls seek out adults 18 and up. Others only interview registered voters, a group that is more politically engaged and leans slightly more Republican. The trickiest polls are those of likely voters, because you have to identify people likely to vote in a particular election. But it's impossible to survey everyone in the country. So here comes the math. Once the calls are done, pollsters do calculations, ensuring the survey reflects the entire population. We're talking age, education, race, regions of the country. This is where it gets heavy. All those factors are given statistical weight. The relatively small, random sample ends up speaking for entire groups. Here's how weighting works. Take age. Those responding to the poll are split into age groups, groups that are then compared to census data on the entire population. If younger people make up a smaller portion of the poll, but there's more of them in real life, they're weighted up to match their appropriate share. If a polling sample overrepresents an age group, surveying more of one group than is in the larger population, they're weighted down. In the end, it all matches. The larger the survey sample and the more random, the better the chance the poll reflects the population as a whole. But because polls don't interview the entire population, they can't precisely say what the opinions of Americans are. But they can get close. No matter the size of the population, a random sample of 1,000 adults should come within plus or minus roughly three percentage points of the country overall. You may have heard about this. It's called the margin of error. And it's powerful because it shows the power of random sampling. Which brings us back to that survey center in Fort Myers. Support or oppose? In this era of caller ID and busy lives, oh, here boldly. random scientific polling has gotten harder. People aren't available. Oh. Well, it only takes a moment, and it's just opinions only. Or just don't want to participate. Sometimes some people are, you know, very rude. Uh, like one time I had someone blow a whistle in my ear through the phone. This would be the wrong job if you feel like you get rejected. You can't do this. Because there's a lot of rejection, but it's not personal. Studies show this hasn't hurt poll accuracy, because some people... Hello, I'm Joshua Damron. ...still pick up the phone. And would you say you feel that way strongly or somewhat? There's a science behind what questions get asked, even how they're phrased. A question worded in a biased way can test a survey's accuracy. Okay, thank you. Questions must be clear and simple so that Americans from all backgrounds can understand them in the same way. 
uh, it's a bad idea to add unnecessary information or arguments that could sway people one way or the other. How about Donald Trump? Is supporting a candidate who shares your opinion on Donald Trump important to you in the congressional election this fall? We try not to be generally not be conversational. We want the questions read with consistency. How about you? Did you vote in the congressional election? Are you registered to vote in the president? After some 80 years of modern polling, the scientific poll has been improved, but it's not perfect. The 2016 election was a reminder that it can be easy to make overconfident forecasts about who will win in a particular election. Uh, polls do have error, but uh, they can provide a pretty good estimate of what the country thinks. Do you approve or disapprove of the way Donald Trump is handling his job as president? How are you, sir? Would you support or oppose nationwide ban? Those are all the questions I have for you today. Thank you so much for your participation, and have a great rest of your evening.